Hi everyone, welcome to the asynchronous unit for week 11. This lecture, starting the essay, will help you, guide you as you begin to take your outline and write your essay. So today's big question is how do I start my essay? It might feel a little daunting or intimidating to think about how to get from A to B, but remember, it all begins with one step. So the first tiny step that we're going to take through this activity today, through this module, is that you will be able to look at your outline and write the first few sentences of your essay. And then I'll guide you through how you should expand that to other sections. First of all, I want to call your attention to the outline example that we did in class a few weeks ago. This is the outline for the Early Childhood Education essay, the exemplar we've been looking at in class. This is the outline that we talked about. So we're going to skip over the abstract. We won't worry about the abstract at all today. We'll worry about the abstract next week. As you remember, probably, your essay should start with the introduction. The word introduction should be centered and bolded because it is a first level headed. Then the next part, which is a subsection under introduction, should be the statement of the problem. And because it's under introduction, it's a second level heading. So it should be left justified flush left with the margin and bold it. Notice the headings have capital letters like titles to a book. The second section under introduction is the thesis statement. That should be, because it's a second level heading, left justified and bolding. Let's look at the outline statements for this sample essay. If you were writing an essay on early childhood education, you might have done an outline that looks like this. The statement of the problem is, should early childhood education be promoted in the US? Look at your outline. You have something there. So I want you to think, as we're going through these sections, what do I have on my outline? What's under my statement of the problem? Let's read the thesis statement for this example outline. This thesis contends that early childhood education is not merely an educational investment, but a societal imperative with multifaceted benefits spanning cognitive development, improved social skills, and emotional intelligence. That's the thesis statement for this example essay. You have a thesis statement that you submitted. So you in the place of this on your outline, you have a different one. Now, let's think about what we have to build out around those two statements, the, the, the statement of the problem and the thesis statement, which were on the outline very short. You can't just submit that because you have to build it out and say other things. Let's read again now we're turning to the essay, away from the outline, and to the essay. Let's read what this one author wrote based on that whole, just that simple um, statement of the problem that was only a sentence or two. The pressing issue of inequitable access to qualify early childhood education defined as structured educational experiences before kindergarten has manifested in law lasting gaps in academic achievement, socio-emotional development, and overall life outcomes. Children from economically disadvantaged backgrounds often face barriers and so forth and so on. You're going to write a paragraph or two that leads up to your statement of the problem. If you skip to the end of the paragraph, you'll see the should question, should early childhood education be promoted in the US? 
you've built a whole paragraph around this sentence or two that previews your arguments you're going to make in the essay. So you might just summarize or preview what you're going to say and then include the statement of the problem, the should question. Let's look at the thesis statement part of the essay. You can't just put the sentence or two. You have to build things around it. So let's read this. This thesis contends that early childhood education is not merely an educational investment, but a societal imperative with multifaceted benefits spanning cognitive development, improved social skills, and emotional intelligence. The imperative is to prioritize and expand access to high quality early childhood education programs. Through an exhaustive analysis of 10 scholarly articles, this thesis aims to offer a thorough understanding of the positive impact of early childhood education on children's lives. So you, we took that one or two sentence thesis statement and built up a paragraph around it. Moving on to the next section of the review of the literature, this is what our outline looks like for the, East, for the early childhood education essay. We want to give some background. So that's a second level heading under review of the literature. So the review of the literature is still centered, but the background is left justified. In our, head, in our outline, we talk about how we want to talk about the Head Start program, the beginnings of understanding of brain development and how important that is in young children, the interconnectedness of home and school. So we just have these little phrases or sentences reminding us of what we want to talk about and the study that goes with it. We can take that outline with just the short phrases or sentences and expand it by writing about our studies. So this is where your article template summaries that you've been writing at the bottom of each article template come in handy. If you know the article that you're going to work from and you know the order, that's you know that because of your outline, you can copy and paste those sections into the review of literature. Now, one word of warning, make sure that you have incorporated my feedback. Um, I, as I review your article templates, I'm correcting grammar, I'm correcting citations. Uh, so look at each article template carefully before you copy and paste it into your essay to make sure you've caught all my feedback. Moving on in the outline, we're still under review of the literature, but we get to another section called benefits. This is the benefits of early childhood education. And so you can see cognitive and academic benefits, social emotional benefits, health benefits, etc. And under each of these sections, uh, we have bullet points that summarize what we want to say. Notice again that benefits is a second level heading under review of the literature, so it's left justified. But the ones you see in italics are under benefits, so those are third level headings. And so we italicize those. We still left justify them, but we italicize them. So writing to this is also going to be easy because you can probably guess what's coming next. You're going to copy and paste each of the articles into the sections, the write-ups into the sections for the articles. Now you might have to add words to make it flow smoothly. You might have to add some more about your topic sentences. Uh, you're going to read through as you're putting it in and see what you need to add to make it make sense. Here's an example of the write-up of the outline portion of the outline you just saw, cognitive and academic benefits. And so you can see the write-up here was about a study called Anderson and Smith. The reason that I've been trying to have you write a topic sentence before each study is that it makes a nice transition into the article. So for example, let's take a look at, at what this says. 
we've got benefits of early childhood education. Early childhood education has been shown to result in a number of positive benefits, both short and long term for children. That's kind of like a bridge sentence that gets you into the, the benefits section. That, that wouldn't be something in your write up. That would be something you would have to add to make it make sense. And then the first one we come to is cognitive and academic benefits. The first sentence is a topic sentence. Cognitive and academic benefits have been found in a number of studies. And then there's a discussion of uh, one or two studies. After you finish the um, review of literature section, then you're going to come back to a completely separate section, recommendations. This is a first level heading because it's not part of the review of literature. It's what do you want to recommend based on your research. If you could wave a magic wand and recommend, make recommendations based on the problem, the should statement, what would you do? So you should have developed an outline with some recommendations here and we're going to number them. So this particular outline says we want to increase funding, community engagement, policy reforms, professional development, and, and establish more research. If we take the outline that we just looked at in the previous slide and we add some words, add paragraphs, it becomes this write-up. Let's read the first paragraph so you can get a sense of things that you can add. <clears throat> Excuse me. Recommendations. Expanding access to quality early childhood education, a call to action. The comprehensive analysis presented in this thesis underscores the urgent need for a resolution to address the existing disparities in access to quality early childhood education. Recognizing the transformative impact of ECE on cognitive, social, and emotional development, it is imperative to implement strategic measures that ensure every child, regardless of socioeconomic background, has equal access to high quality early education programs, specifically through the following action items. So see how we've brought around again the main points that this is a social justice issue, that children need access to early childhood education, and that they have benefits. And then you can begin listing your recommendations. Increase fundings. So what does that mean? Governments and educational institutions to prioritize and substantially increase funding for early childhood education. Remember, you're waving a magic wand. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but if you could wave, wave a magic wand, what would you propose as solutions to the problem? Again, understanding that everything has to be supported by your research. If you're finding that early childhood education really does make an impact, you wouldn't have a recommendation that says we're not going to support early childhood education. One of the final sections in your essay will be the conclusion. Here is the conclusion statement on the outline of the early childhood education essay. Early childhood education benefits students, parents, and society. It should be supported through funding and other initiatives such as community engagement, policy reform, professional development, and more research. So that's just a simple couple of little sentences that says what you're going to expand it to say. Here is the full written out conclusion that's a couple of paragraphs. The major thing that the conclusion should do is to restate the arguments. So you want to say early childhood education is worth a worthwhile investment because it has all of these different benefits and here are the things that we can do. I really encourage you to read the sample thesis that's on the course site to see how you can go about expanding your thoughts. So you don't, you're not just giving a sentence or two for each of these sections. 
You're going to have a references section as I've described to you. You may single space the references, but double space between them. You're going to alphabetize them by the first uh, last name in the reference. So Anderson is, comes before Braden Camp, comes before Brown, etc. You may choose to do a hanging indent if you know how to do that. Every reference that you have for all your articles should be in this list. If it's cited in your essay, it must have a reference. If it's not cited in your essay, it should not have a reference. I want to repeat that. If you have a citation in your essay, it has to have a matching reference. If there's no citation in your essay, don't just throw a reference in. It has to be connected. The two have to be connected, the citations and the references. I want to remind you that there is a thesis grading rubric in the instructions for the assignment. I want to go over it now before you start writing so you know what to pay attention to. The grading rubric is graded from a, a point value of zero if something is missing, all the way up to three if something is exceptional. Here are the components on the rubric. I'm going to be looking to see that you have a complete title page. If you're unsure what to put on your title page, look at the Early Childhood Education essay. I want to make sure that you have a complete and accurate summary of your abstract. That's your abstract. And we'll learn how to do this next week. Don't worry about the abstract yet. We write that at the end. You should have a complete introduction. That's a statement of the problem. And you should have a complete thesis that's very clear. I shouldn't have to hunt for it. You should have a review of the literature that gives a background or a summary and a history or a history, some information. And then you should have a summary of the literature. These are your research articles. Um, so you should have at least five research articles. That says 10, but I've reduced it to five. But you should also have uh, five additional articles. So it's five research articles and five additional articles. They should be appropriate and they should be um, summarized accurately. So that's referring to the, the write-ups you've been doing in the templates. You should have um, you should have viable resolutions. These are your recommendations. You should have a conclusion that's complete and summarizes your, your essay. You should have at least 10 references and matching citations. We talked about APA in class, so you need to follow APA format and everything that entails. And the paper format counts as well, so you sh your paper should be double spaced, have correctly formatted headings, think about whether they're first level or second level. It should have page numbers, a running header, and appropriately sized font. I recommend using Times New Roman size 12 or Arial size 12, uh, use a black font. I'd also like to remind you that I've put an APA and writing guidelines on the course site. That is in uh, last week's week 10 module, if you want to bring that up and keep it by your side as you're writing. Because you might say, I don't remember how to do numbers, and they're right there. So let's talk about next steps in the course. You're going to work through this week's module, Module 11, by viewing this video, which you're doing and almost done. You're going to meet with me. Uh, so there's a sign up link in the module to if you haven't already signed up. And you're going to meet with me on April 16th. There are uh, some few discussion questions in the module. I'd like you to update me on your progress by doing that. 
So that's all due by midnight, April 16th. And then start working on Module 12, which uh, will be up shortly. That's due April 23rd. Th that week we'll focus on how to write the abstract. And then a week after that, we'll meet on April 30th, and your, um, your draft of your essay will be due. I'm going to try to turn that around quickly, give you feedback, because your final would be due two weeks after that. That's it. Any questions, feel free to email me at hallbrenner at mercy.edu or drop by one of my office hours. Good luck, everyone. I know you can do this.